start recording. Okay. So, uh, where we left off, we were fiddling with this uh, 1D physics game, uh, and we could make you know, a series of these little ball guys, and whoops, uh, we drag them off and hit them together, and they you know spring out with some momentum and fly off into space. Um, so that was that was a little um, test of one-dimensional um, physics. Uh, so um, I suspect yours must be uh, paused, given that it's hasn't set. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm trying to find on my keyboard the uh, unpause. I'm not What's sure. What, I'm not sure what it is on your code. Mine's enter. Yeah, that's what I thought mine was too, but. I'm also on. Uh, I'm not on my normal uh, keyboard, so it could be a, one of those. Ah. Things. But I'll uh, I'll just check if you want to keep going. Well, um, it is enter. I might that's... change the key or something. Oh, well, um, that'll that'll feed into what we're going to do first of all, because uh, what we need to do. Does that does that unpause properly? Is not. That's very strange. Well, maybe we can debug this real quick. I wish this wouldn't be so. I'm going to try to. In fact, in fact, if you look at your code, you've got paused equals false, so it shouldn't be paused in the first place. Perhaps it's not actually paying any attention to the paused variable, and the key is fine. Seems to hit the breakpoint the way I want it to. Yeah, so I suspect the problem must be one of these uh, two bits of code here. So why don't we scroll down to where it's getting used? Oh, hold on a sec. That's a little... Yeah, this is not ideal, but it's okay. Uh... Maybe um, hide your solution explorer or yeah. unpin it or whatever. The... Yeah. Um... So, <clears throat> so if paused and is active, so the question will be, is the, is the simulation, is this the code getting into here? So probably perhaps set a breakpoint and see if... Um... Yeah, I just tripped the breakpoint. Oh, you tripped it, okay. Yeah. So... so I'm not paused and I'm active. Um, I wonder what I did to this. It was working fine. So there's another part of the code elsewhere that uses the pause function, um, if yours matches mine. Um, and that's dragging the shape. So it's possible you're stuck in some sort of drag mode, but that would be very unusual. Well, yeah, shape looks... being dragged is minus one. So. Yeah, that that seems like it should work. So is it really not progressing the simulation? This is very odd. Well, what... I don't know. At, at this point, what I would be doing would be to go uh, back to the thing and try just try again and make sure... Back to yeah. the uh, program and try and make sure that it's actually... not an issue. So, um, I mean, that should be separating. So yeah. I guess perhaps um, go to the code that does the separation, which is this line here, and breakpoint on it, and see if you can get it to trigger. Yeah, I actually can't even see the screen at this point, but yeah. Oh, you can't see my screen. I see, yeah, that's it's OK. Okay, well, there we are. So that's working. Well, yeah, there's all kinds of... This is very odd, because I haven't touched this since last time, but... Uh, why did shape index... Velocity, well, y, zero. I seem to recall we had a similar problem, but you can see that mine is quite happily doing the separation. Yeah. Oh bother. <coughs> I 
<coughs> all, or that's initial velocity. It's all zero, so the velocity of the everything's zero. Okay. Um. Hmm. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. And um, have you tried? No, they have no velocity right now, but they they should have separated. So. Yes. Um, have you tried? Yeah, right clicking one of them and tried to move it. Um, with the the spring. Oh. So that works. <laughs> what? So we've got a separation bug. Okay. Well, I think potentially this session has just become a debugging session, but that's oh, well. fine. Um, but it's interesting now because separation is still engaged. I can drag the whole thing. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, what's I think is happening is um, some kind of momentum transfer has taken place. So that's one thing I wanted to talk about um, on this session. Um, okay. And I'll just sort of try and draw the diagram. So you can imagine if we have like um, one, two, three circles, and they're all colliding, um, this one might get kicked like back and forth. Um, and what we want to do is basically if, if we have a shape and a shape that are colliding, but they're moving away from each other, we want to not detect that as a collision. We still want to separate them, but not collide them. Does that make sense? Yeah, that does make sense. Um, so we may, we may do that, um, uh, today if we can get to it, otherwise we'll, um, Otherwise, we'll we'll save that for next time. But let's let's try and let's try and debug this because um, this is an interesting one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this all the way over here because uh, I think your code, my code works, and yours doesn't. So um, okay, so now I'll just go full screen. Yeah. Just so I will I will. Um, well, I don't think we've tried this. So what would you do? to debug this problem? What would, what would your first step at this point be? I might give a shape some velocity. That's not a bad little plan. Um, you could add that, uh, yeah, just in the add shape section. Yeah, it's gonna take a while to find. Okay, you, well here's, yeah, yeah the, uh, we'll stick with circles. And I can just give myself some Small amount of uh, vertical velocity, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, I assume you mean horizontal. That's what, yeah, that's right. Just the opposite. Of, uh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> um, are, are you on like a trackpad at the moment? Unfortunately. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's all right. This, I don't. Yeah. I mean, there's a possibility that this video doesn't make it all the way to the internet, but that's okay. <laughs> um, depends on if it's useful at the end of the day. It might not be. Oh, you know, debugging, debugging is a very important skill. Um, so yeah, just, I, don't know the I, think, value. I think one is probably maybe two or three. Well, can't, can't go wrong with three. <laughs> I that, that's pixels. Okay. Well, yeah. that's... okay. So velocity is working. Right. And yeah, you'll have to do a bit of, bit of, um, careful, uh, if you want to overlap them, you have to move quickly. In fact, oh yeah, you can and you can stop it by dragging it. So that's fine. Why is this working all of a sudden? Well, that's because you haven't collided any shapes. So what happens if you oh. like intersect something with that guy? It works. So that works as well. Okay. So it's just the initial trans. The, the initial velocity seems to never happen. Um. Well. This is, this is the important consideration, and that is, like I was sort of drawing in this diagram, um, I know you have it off screen, but um, so in this case, like what we'd want to do is we'd still want to do um, the separation, like we still, uh, do, 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 do. we'd still want to um, separate that out, and so we'd end up with like a shape there and a shape there, but we wouldn't touch 
the velocities, we'd leave them as is because it were, they were not moving towards each other. They were moving, they started moving away from each other. So there's no way this is like an, uh, a collision is like an intersection. So that's the um, distinction. So. Right. Well, we've already made like a corrective effort there. So they're not, they just happen to still be overlapped, but they're on their way out. Yeah. So we're detecting, we're detect, we're sort of conflating these two things. We're detecting them both as, as like we're detecting an intersection and assuming it's a collision. So we can actually do some more work there um, on collisions. But the problem that we're having at the moment is uh, an intersection problem. Um, because obviously these shapes are intersecting and they're not being um, separated. So uh, let's um, let's go back to your code and um, let's get rid of the velocity and just assume that uh, for the moment that velocity is working fine and that it's an intersection problem. So um, what's what's your next step? Um, er, trying to think. Hmm. That's okay. Well, where's calculate separation, light well, shape index? Mm -hmm. um, this is the thing we added last time. I don't know if that's, I mean, this worked just fine. So I really do not know. Uh, momentum transfer, separation. Um, so we're applying pending separation. So that looks fine. Um, <clears throat> so what I think is probably the next step to do would be to set up some sort of test case, uh, like a really simple test case that we can uh, go through in the debugger by hand. Um, so that's probably going to involve like two shapes that should separate and don't. Right. <sighs> yeah, well, I mean, I don't know. I think like if this is still an issue, the easiest thing would be just to make this happen, right? Yeah. So, so that. that they, yeah. they should have separated by now. So why don't we uh, pause that in the debugger and see what happens? Um, so yeah, scroll up, scroll up to the. I don't know where your shapes just went, um, but yeah, scroll up to like the start of um, oh. the update method is probably. Oh, we this zoomed them wrong. right out. This is no fun. Oops. Oh. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not. Yeah. No one's having that. Okay, okay. So one. And two, all right, so if you go to the start of uh, simulation probably and stick a breakpoint on and we'll just walk all the way through that. So starting uh, around where the big simulation comment is, if you have the same comment, this place where yeah, the pause happens. Where I, where I wanna extract to a method called simulation tick or something, but we can do that later. Um, I, I do wish like, um, you know how you can like hit uh, control comma or you can use the um, thing that you just use the little drop down. It'd be great mm. if you could mark sections of code without having to use a method. Like you could be like simulation and just search for it the same way. Yeah, or like a like a go. If it would work with the go to label, we just yeah. slap. Exactly, like exactly. So uh, yeah, okay. stick a, stick a breakpoint yeah. in there, and we'll see what happens. Okay. Well, we're active and unpaused, so. We have two shapes, mm -hmm. no problem. Acceleration. That seems fine. We've got gravity turned off. Oi. Um. Hello. Hello, hello. We lost the call. Um. Hmm. I wish there was a way to pause OBS. Okay, so <clears throat> YouTube. Is everyone having a good time? Daniel. Let's uh, type to him on Slack.
Hey, oh, and he's dropped off. Okay, that's just me. Ha. Ah. All right, so. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, you can't see that behind my head. But apparently, Daniel's computer just decided to go to sleep for no reason. Um, it's probably a. I don't know if. Um, here we go. Uh, you back? Are we having fun yet? <laughs> <laughs> has, has your laptop got one of those keys? You know. Um, like, is yep. a key on it that puts it to sleep? I think so. I think I might have touched it. That's such a such a user-hostile design. Um, yeah, my computer is having all kinds of problems for some reason. It's even, it's on power. It's on a, it's a already, it's connected to power, but it seems to be, like, losing more power than it's earning. And now my screen's white screening. Oh, my. And um, the Chrome, Chrome is, like, about to crash. I went to share screen and it's completely white. I don't know what's hell hell's happening. Ah, <laughs> uh, you know these modern computers spend all of this money on it, and um... yeah, this thing's like, yeah, this thing's an embarrassing amount of money considering how your computer destroys it. Yes. <laughs> uh, I don't know now. I mean, if I if I close Google, it's gonna I'm gonna get kicked off again, but it's completely frozen. Um, hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. I don't know what we're going to do. Um, oh, I'm hoping, I, I don't know what I'm hoping, actually. I was hoping it would come back, but now even studio, well, I'm in my break point in studio, but. All right, I well, think... let's, we, we might, we might have to ditch this particular recording for the YouTube yeah. upload. I think this. Oh, um... look, at you back. Yay. Everyone's happy and well and good. Oh, yeah, no, I, I know that's probably uh, okay. We can keep going. Well, but... We can keep going. I haven't hit stop yet. Let's go. I'm, I hope everyone who's watching this on YouTube is having a wonderful time. Oh, well, you're not going to edit it? Oh, well. Yeah. Uh, do, do you have any idea how much of a pain in the ass it is to edit these videos? It's like if I can upload straight from OBS, it's that's a good day. No, for sure. Yeah, that's <laughs> fine. So, where, where, does, ad, where does Roland, yeah. baby? <laughs> this is not an ad for, for Visual Studio by any means. But... Visual All Studio right. 2017 from Microsoft. <laughs> yeah, works great on NVMe <laughs> Pro Drive. I was like, works, works great on Windows 10 from Microsoft. Thanks, guys. Okay. Okay, sorry. So, I'm, on, I'm just going to get back to where I was before. I got two shapes that should be colliding but aren't and then i'm going to drop into this okay into active again okay now we were where, where we were before before i got disconnected okay so i still got two shapes acceleration starts at zero is this maybe it the fact that my gravity's not there no because no, we so did this on purpose for 1d exactly um well we in fact we have gravity toggleables so that things just don't fall off the screen while we're testing stuff. But keep in mind, so um, we're making a distinction here between velocity and position. <clears throat> so we're ignoring all of the velocity effects at the moment. So the fact that acceleration is zero and velocity is zero is fine by us. Right. Oh, yeah, right. We're not even, yeah, it's immaterial. We're not using it for anything. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, acceleration, yeah, it's always just going to be adding zero to the delta. So, yeah, there's nothing. Okay. So shape being dragged is minus one, so that's good. And now we're in this better way. So, so velocity zero. All should be zero, yeah. So that isn't it? Yep. So that's fine. Plus half of nothing mm -hmm. times not times a bunch of things. This is going to be zero. Yep. Or yeah. So that's so yeah nothing, and then nothing. Um. So that's uh, fine. Um, yeah. So we're like so. There's no there's no forces here being transferred or manipulated in any way. Exactly. So the net effect of that was nothing, at all. Exactly. So no okay. So now we should then drop in and find. Oh yeah. So we'll just do that again, and we should be dropping in now to. Um, uh, calculating the separation. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So. So this is where we have a problem somewhere somehow. 
Okay, I'm going to skip past all of the yep. vector initializations. Um, and I think at this I think this is all fine. We have the minus one and mm -hmm. So okay. there's two ways we could handle this. We could step into calculate separation or we could run it and read the results out and if we get results we don't like we can uh, skip it but that would let us uh, very quickly um, sort of uh, subdivide what we're searching for so I would suggest yes. stepping over it to begin with yep um, so and then let's inspect what what it spat out so let's go through these arrays um, well, these arrays ah, are managed they're, so. they're stack allocators so that's all right we can open them up in the watch window um, okay. I gotta do this through the trackpad, so that's kind of annoying. But that's all right. Watch one. Oh yeah, DW control, DW. All right. So so uh, yeah, we'll need a subscript on it. Yeah, sorry. Well, oh man, hello. Uh, <laughs> control Z, control. Y, y, control Z, there we go. And now array index. Okay, zero. so that's got some. And if you look at array index one, it should have um, a similar amount um, as well. Right, well, they're similarly well, sized. Yep. That does raise an interesting question. And I just want to check something. If I try and make on mine, uh, this is, I guess, you wouldn't have this benefit um, if you were doing this sort of um, in your own situation. But um, the question does arise. Uh, um, see if I can. Okay, there we go. Um, the question does arise. Um, yeah, there we go. Um, what is a sensible value for uh, pending separation? So if I uh, add watch and do zero. Okay, so it is, we're zoomed in far enough. And now, now I remember we've actually zoomed into zoom level 12 by default. So that was just what I wanted to check. Um, okay. uh, if that makes sense that you know, we're not like, it's not moving like half a pixel and, and it's actually working. We just can't see it. So. Right. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Okay. So that sort of, that sort of tells us that the pending separation is correct. We could also look at the other um, things that are coming off that. So. Sure. Um, probably, well, separation axes, maybe they're, Hmm. That's not Is that quite, a problem? That's not quite one, but it's close enough. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah, it's going to round to one, right, from the from the raster or whatever the well, GPU. Um, we use separation axes. Well, what do we actually use separation axes for? Um, well, to get the direction so we can determine the bounce back. Oh, that's um, right. We do too. Um, so we're using it here and we've commented out that code. So we never actually used that. So that's fine. Um, uh, I think the rest, I mean, the fact that pending separation is, is alive and well kind of does yeah. it for me. Um, so intersection count, we're going to drop into that. We do, we, we do divide by intersection count. So um, you can, in fact, you can see it on your screen at the sort of um, second last line currently on your yeah. screen. Um, that's a one. So that's a one, so that looks pretty good. And I'm guessing that uh, subscript one is also a one. So um, separation yep. axis is fine. So collided shape index is the only other one. But if I look at it, um, ah, ah. One for that, so that. And one should be zero. But um, this is something we also actually use in this process. So. Uh, the output of calculate separation is correct is yep. sort of the conclusion of that so let's figure out why we're not getting any um separation 
let's continue our step through okay. this code. So we've got, uh, so we're looking at, well, we're looking at shape zero. So one on the left and uh, collided shape. Yeah, so this should be, this is the one on the right. Uh, and they are different. Yeah, 4.5 and 3.3. .3. So yeah, the radius on this one is 0 0.99, but that's probably fine. Well, that's radius okay. That was... Slightly, slightly different <laughs> objects, but mostly the same. Okay. Yep. So, all good. Um, so this is really it. I mean, so the position's going should have been the position of three point three five needs to be snapped to the result of this, which is that divided like, by one. So it's going to subtract point four five from position yeah. dot x. Um, so just check what position is now. Yeah, position is three point three five. Okay. So we should be to removing half zero point four. So it's like two point eight or something like that. Mm -hmm. And. Um, uh, Oh, sorry, two point nine oh four. So that's okay. That's, so that, that works. works. Well, I, yeah, that's bizarre, but okay. Um, momentum transfer. Uh, so mass. Oh, that's right, and and of course, um, the only time we actually use collider shape index is actually to uh, skip over the momentum transfer. So that's a velocity thing. So that's fine. Um, yep. It's only a position thing. Um, so we need to be looking. They're we, fine. Go ahead. Well, we know that it's. Um, well, we know that no momentum is going to be transferred because it's all zeros past that point. So we're looking at uh, the, I guess, the two yeah. lines uh, after the separation comment. So we can ignore momentum transfer. Yep. So on yours, line 346 and 347. So the bug is somewhere on those two lines. Yeah. Is it weird because it's I don't recall changing this. Um I mean why is already zero? So we I mean we we modified the position of the shape. So unless we're doing something silly oh this is um these are structs, right? Yes, they're value types. They're structs. So I don't know when I did this exactly, but I've copied that into. This is a copy. I haven't reassigned it. Uh, yes, exactly. So, so that's that's dumb. I don't know when that happened, but yeah, that's that's the obvious thing. So um, we co I copied these locally so that I would, I guess, avoid the. So I, don't know. I, I, yeah. I, I'm recalling from last time. I mean, there is video evidence. Um, <laughs> so yeah. that the four people who watch this on YouTube can write in the comment and correct us. Um, <laughs> high quality video. But anyway, um, if you look at my screen just briefly, I'll, I'll tell you what happened. Um, oh, yeah, sure. so you will, rec will recall last episode. Um, I was, um, talking about how we have uh, other mass and other initial velocity. And I recall at that point that you were like, oh, um, we'll have other shape as well. Thank you very much. I'm not sure if you or I decided that was a good idea. Um, I, think, I think, yeah, I don't recall, but I, it's probably me or if it was a bad idea, it was me. But well, yeah. I'm pretty sure what then happened is I, I must have missed you doing it because I know we had this bug last time too. And I think you um, habitually just said, well, other shape and shape, and just moved them all up to the top and made yeah. that conversion. Oh, yeah. So I suspect that must have happened. Business um, developer disease there, but yeah, that's totally what happened. Yeah. So that's well, actually, yeah, I that's actually, good, but yeah, you could do that. Um, but let's not, let's do it the right way, which is to not make, not make it harder to read. Well, so just... the reason, one reason you might not want to do it that way um, and this is why we kind of like using arrays and um, stack alloc uh, memory. Uh, and that is because you can store directly into um, into the memory location. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if you know. did it that way, you were copying out the entire shape struct, uh, copying it onto the stack and then copying it off the stack. And I mean, it's not much, it's one, two, three, four, five, 
6 times 4, um, maths, 6 times 4, 24 bytes um, being copied each time, which is, you know. Um, I always thought that the, I always thought that, that would have been optimized out. No, I suspect it's not. This is the thing. Um, compiler optimizers aren't actually necessarily all that good. Um, you have to check what it's doing. For example, um, in fact, I think I came across uh, this exact thing on something that I was working on um, the other day, which uh, I'll, you, know, you know exactly what that was because I just showed you, but I'll save it for not on stream. Um, actually, I mean, some of it's public, so it's um, uh, the Pixel 3D stuff. Uh, but I was using, uh, lab. let's see if, uh, so yes, I was using um, sharplab.io uh, and I was actually um, doing some tests to see uh, what the JIT would output for a particular series of instructions and whether, whether it would optimize a way storing something um, out to a temporary and then writing it back and if it would get rid of that temporary and it didn't yeah. um, is basically oh. the end result of that. So it was actually faster uh, to do, I think it's unsafe. Um, because I, I think um, so. I think the 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 problem with my assumptions is that I've I think I've gotten it into my head that accessing shapes, you know, shapes I shapes I shapes I is somehow um, doing the same operation multiple times, like getting the like accessing the array at that index or the the piece of memory at that index over and over again, and even if that is the case, like. The, the the problem is well you think that you're you know cleaning it up and only doing that access once but like you said like we're actually dumping the entire variable into into the stack so well I, I, in fact I think I can show you uh, at least one thing that might be interesting so let me try and um, let me try and pull this up uh, I need a copy of so I, I like sharp lab it's not as good as um, what is it go bolt or something uh, Godbolt. Um, it's not as good as Godbolt uh, as far as um, what it like. I, like this is this is better, but I mean this is uh, C plus uh, plus or C code, um, right? And it and it gives you like this nicely highlighted, and it tells you what everything is. And um, perhaps I can. Sh uh, I'll try and show you it in the C sharp version, and. Um, then if I can't get that working, I'll show you in the C++ version. Uh, but what I'm doing now is I'm just looking for the stuff that I committed uh, yesterday. Um, if I can find it, I'm in the right place. Yep. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. 17 hours ago, audio package, audio system. I think it was in SoundBank, but goodness knows. Um, so, Uh, create from <laughs> and I have to find that. Sorry. Don't mind me while I scroll through here. But um, I yeah, it's I do that actually. Kind of day, that's okay. Sorry, it's that kind of day. Don't that's worry. right. We're we're having a grand old time. This is this is our best episode yet. Um, yeah, no, that's pipeline. I wanted um. Uh, is it? platform where's where's the um like where would i find this call i know i, I know i wrote it uh, um well wouldn't it be um pixel 3d dot engine, dot engine yeah that's that's right okay i've always to go to found it <laughs> um okay so uh this code here so you can see that this is doing um trying to at least quickly convert um floating point to um um, 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 uh, integer in a fast way. Uh, and I, I would have preferred it uh, come from the native F audio, but that's compiled. Like this code is actually from STB Vorbis, um, mm -hmm. but it's compiled out uh, of the F audio version, which, uh, you know, is fine. But then I have to do it. Um, and so this is the code that I was sticking into here um, just to see what it. Uh, 
do to do to do uh, float just to see what it generated so I'll just very quickly um, try and recreate what the uh, stuff is oh this is cool yeah. length and then we need the magic numbers from here so this is sort of the process that I went through for this and if I do that hopefully it builds in and we get this out the other end which is obviously it's not as nice as the um, other code um, right but uh, if I if I reduce this down you can actually figure out that doing it this way so uh, we create an you know a four byte integer temp and then we take the address of that cast it to a float and then store into that by address uh, this value so we're basically this is something you very rarely see in um, in uh, C sharp at all, uh, and I don't think you see it in modern C plus plus very much. But in um, usually, in fact, what um, STB does is it actually. So the thing that I was testing, uh, in mm -hmm. fact, was uh, if I can find STB Vorbis, that could be a tricky one. Um, hang on, uh, projects. Um, ba, 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 da, 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 FNA, lib, F audio. Uh, let's just open up. Um, I think this is it. So I'm just opening up the F audio code, um, which will give me, uh, hopefully, it will give me uh, STV Vorbis. So, um, where is it now? Then I need to find um, from the comment that I put. Uh, so this is a neat little hack. I've never seen this before, um, but it's kind of clever what it does. So it uses some magic values to sort of like reinterpret um, the floating point number as an integer and does sort of the bitwise operations that it needs to do. Um, but you can see the way that it does it. It does a union. So it says, you know, here's a basically a struct where that memory location and that memory location are the same. Right, That's you've actually shown that to me before. This is a real example of that. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so uh, one thing that I was banging in here is like, you know, we, I, I tried, if I do a struct, um, you know, foo in uh, i float f, um, and I do, Struct layout uh, uh, layout kind dot explicit, and then I do uh, field offset zero field offset zero. So oh, yeah, like this is this is equivalent code to this, and so um, you know one thing I could do is I could take this and copy it into uh, wherever it went sharp lab and um, Rather than doing this, I could. Uh, uh, what do we need? Um, do to do, do interrupt services, please. Um, you know, I, I could go uh, foo temp and do this the same way. Um, and as it turns out, I won't finish that thought, but basically yeah. store it into temp.f, which sh will also store it into temp.i because it's the same memory location. Uh, and as it turns out, that's actually, uh, I think, like two instructions slower. Um, huh. uh, and that's just an interesting thing that you can do uh, testing this. But the other thing that I wanted to uh, say about this, um, uh, because you mentioned it, and that is a lot of the addressing modes on um, uh, the, the addressing instructions on, um, on x86 can do maths when you address something. So you can actually do, I would like this register. I, so this is like um, floating point load. I would like uh, whatever's in this register plus whatever's in this register times four. And if you look at the code that's going with that, that's um, loading this value. So that all happens in a single instruction. 
and you get this complicated addressing. So uh, the compiler will actually cache this if it's a um, if it's an like uh, reused. So if I uh, needed that value multiple times, uh, the compiler can actually very simply, easily um, get rid of multiple uh, requests for this one variable if it can detect it. But even then, accessing, accessing this variable is a single instruction. Um, and right. Because it can do all of this addressing. So just to work out what this is, ECX will be I um, and times four will be because um, uh, a floating point number is four bytes. So um, that, that, gives, that gives you I times four, which will give you the uh, byte offset into the source array. And then EDI is the register where uh, the pointer to source. So where that is stored is in EDI. Right. So that's more or less how that works. So bottom so line you, is that's, that's quite fast. Var, yeah, so if you var that, if you source, like if you copied source I to like some temp inside that loop. Well, let's find out. Oh. Yeah. Um, I, first of all, what I might do is try and simplify this a bit so we're not quite as, uh, so there's not all this cruft here. Um, get rid of that and get rid of that and I will uh, do, 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 do. let's call this um, source and uh, is it short star Destination. So I'm just going to simplify it just so we don't have so much garbage in the output so we can actually read it better. So this is this is sort of the initial one here. Right. Um, and so... Um, 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 yeah, not 19 is where we were before, right? So, well, now, now I have it simplified. What I will do is I'll first, first we'll have a look at this thing just because it's interesting. Um, through temp, um, actually, what I'll duplicate that. Um, foo temp, and then temp dot f equals uh, public please. Uh, source plus magic, and then. This, oh, I just, I'm just waiting for auto. Oh, it does actually have auto complete. It's just slow temp dot i. So this is this is the sort of nice one. You can already see um, a problem with this, and that is uh, C sharp makes you assign these fields, so you actually have to do this. Um, so in fact, this this is one of the reasons this is worse um, or slower is because you actually have to do that. Whereas if I go over here. And we'll get rid of all of that. And get rid of that. Get rid of that. Um, so you can see this one gets an extra two instructions. Um, it actually has to. And what those two instructions are, in fact, is it's clearing the memory for foo. Now, um, let's see what it is. It's uh, L E A E A X. What does it use EAX for? That's an excellent question. So basically it's generating a bunch of garbage. <laughs> um, like I couldn't really tell you um, <clears throat> why it needs to do that. But as you can see, there's more instructions here. So it's, it is doing more work. Um, either way, right. Although in this case, you're, you, I mean, you had to create a container structure in order to do that. Or I mean, in the other example, like in the other window, like you yeah. couldn't have just barred out the the source I. Like that would have ended up being um, just a float, wouldn't it have? Um, so I'm not sure I understand exactly. Oh, if you go, to, can you go to the second tab? Oh, this one. Yep. Yeah. Well, what's to stop you from just like going inside uh, there. Okay. Like oh yeah. Yeah. So that was that was the second part of the question. So I'll duplicate oh. that out. 
Um, I just yeah, I'm just curious what. Uh, okay, so that's a uh, float s equals source i, and so let's see what this does. Um, that's built. So as you can see, this is in fact exactly the same code. Um, right. But then then let's 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 make a modification. Let's say let's say destination plus equals s on that one, and um, I'll have to cast it. And uh, this will be equivalent. So, um, will it actually? No. Yes, it is. Okay, short. I. So then let's have a look at that one. So, um, as you can see, even just looking at this, uh, yeah, this one is longer. I haven't have to sort of sit and figure out why it's longer. Um, uh, I don't know what. ST0 is unfortunately. So um, not having programmed in x86 assembly, I'm not exactly fluent in it. So you can actually like look these up and Google them and stuff. Right. But um, you sort of get that's the rough very, idea. That's very interesting. Like that's, yeah, that's, I think that that's sort of like the the assumption or the bias that, that uh, can be proven wrong just by looking at the, the assembly. Exactly, exactly. Um, <laughs> And of course, the unfortunate thing is if I move over to, where did I put it? Okay, here's Godbolt. So if I take Godbolt and let's take the, um, let's get rid of that. Um, in fact, let's get rid of that as well. Although, yeah, okay, so let's ta take this um, and then I'll convert it to C++ and see what it spits out. Um, let's have to fix all the compilation errors. Uh, do, 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 do. And let's see what happens. Um, so, um, let me see. So you can see, first of all, I suspect that uh, all of this stuff here, that's calling convention stuff. So um, that's more or less equivalent to that. Um, right. It's the calling convention is uh, slightly different between um, C Sharp and C++. I, the details are currently escaping me, but that's fine. Um, and so here's our loop through the uh, thing. Um, let's see, jump L19. So 19 is the start of the loop. Um, hmm, that's interesting. So it looks, like this code is in fact shorter than the um, C++ code, just sort of on the face of it. However, I would be inclined to think it's possible that the C++ code is faster because it is doing um, uh, um, uh, what do you call these um, MMX instructions? Um, what is it? No, uh, Intel Intrinsics Guide. SSE, that's the one, it's doing um, uh, SSE instructions rather than doing um, x87 instructions. So do, if you uh, remember your ancient computer history, um, you used to be able to get a coprocessor co for the x86. Yeah, I remember get, yeah, buying a math coprocessor for my Tandy. Yeah, and that so was... that, that's what, that's what uh, on the x86 it did these. So this is this was x87 instructions, whereas this is doing um, uh, SSE instructions, which I'm not sure they could be faster. I actually would have to check that. Um, and you, you know, this is the sort of thing where you might, in fact, um, um, uh, profile it just to be sure. But the other thing I could do, uh, just to just to round out the discussion here, is I could come back to here and grab this sucker. Um, and then convert this. So if I do that, and then I say that this is one of these, um, and then I go temp, and unlike in C sharp, I don't have to initialize this as far as I know. Uh, and let's see what the result of that is. 
it looks more or less the same. So certainly in um, C++ world, C++ compilers do a lot more um, magic in these situations. Um, <clears throat> so that, uh, you know, they, that those two lines of code are equivalent, like treating it as a memory location and writing into it is the same as just writing straight into it. So that's interesting, that's just fine. Um, so it's obviously, certainly for this compiler, which is GCC 8.2, this is not a performance change. Um, what is interesting is you could actually make this a whole lot faster if you used um, 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 uh, four wide instructions. So I think we have discussed that at some point. Uh, do you remember I talked about, um, uh, we, we looked at the Intel Intrinsics Guide yeah. So, um, you know, if I look up uh, MOVSS, um, so that uh, compiles, uh, so that, that the um, intrinsic for that, so if you actually wanted to call this function from C++ or C, you'd use this and it generates the MOVSS instruction. Um, however, if I wanted to, um, so I'll look up uh, MM, load uh, what have I done oh, too many yeah so um, there's a single single um, single precision value uh, it was the SS one wherever that's gone in this list but there's also um, mm load okay here's SS which is move SS but I can also do uh, load PS which will load um, four uh, values at once and then I can do um, the equivalent. Right, so, and the previous the uh, previous one said that the upper bits were zeroed out, so you're only moving one out of the four. Exactly. This one's all four. Exactly. So, um, yeah. So I could do I could be doing four uh, calculations uh, at a time. So you know, then I do instead of add ss, which is over here, I would then do um, add ps. So I do all four at once, and as as you can see, the performance numbers for both instructions are the same. So you're just wasting cycles by using this one. So uh, it's a little disappointing that the compiler is not clever enough to actually convert that to something else. So if I change this to uh, Clang 7, let's see if that generates something else. Not really. So that's fine. Um, it's probably worried that these pointers are like aliased or something. Um, something like that. So in theory, sometimes the compiler will actually do the transformation for you but it's kind of rare and you and you always have to check it, which is why this tool is very handy for that. Um, yeah, absolutely. So, and then obviously, uh, what were we looking at? We were looking at uh, the code for, do, 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 do. Uh, so this is the code for Vorbis decoding in the latest uh, Pixel 3D. Um, so, and obviously we'd, we'd love for this particular code path to be four times faster because this is this is load time for the game so um, whether we consider actually uh, coming out with a cross-platform DLL and actually writing this as a fast version you know that's something we could do um, or we could like say Ethan can you can you turn on the fast um, you know integer conversion on your end although uh, looking at the code for um, not that one for F audio, you'll see that this is, this is not actually, no one's calling into, um, the Intel intrinsics in this. So, which is, um, not really, not really surprising. Um, this is, this is actually slightly slower, um, than, uh, uh, Vorbis file, but that's fine. Cause we're making other changes that will more than, more than make up for that speed loss. So anyway, that's, um, there's a, Casey Miratori's name in that file. Oh yeah, um, if you look at the, um, oh, I can't remember, I read it, po possibly just this web webpage. Um, uh, it actually talks about how they developed this and Casey did a bit of, um, so it was interesting because this is like a uh, clean room implementation of um, Ogvorbus. So this is why they can release it as uh, public domain. Um, because it's oh, not under the uh, libvorbs library. Like this is implemented entirely from the spec, uh, but uh, Casey had to do some generation because this generates a bunch of tables in here somewhere. And to actually 
like apparently the spec isn't um, detailed enough to actually give you the coefficients or something for one of the tables. And so Casey sort of like did a, I forget what you call it. Uh, it's like basically clean room reverse engineering. Um, here's, you know, mm -hmm. here's a table. I don't know if it's this table specifically, but um, used, used an actual version to um, regenerate this table from scratch in such a way that it could be included here without, you know, a copyright or intellectual property problem. Um, right. And so it's actually quite an interesting read. I th I'll have a quickly open this up in a web browser tab and have a quick look. Um, <clears throat> um, 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 um. Ah, clean room implementation. So, you know, this is actually, it's, a, it's an interesting read um, for those people playing along at home. Um, and there's like a chat log or something of uh, where he got Casey's assistance. I don't know where it is. Um, but yeah, so that's uh, SDV Vorbis, which is, you know, it's pretty cool. It's from all, all the way back from 2007. I didn't realize it was that old. Anyway, so that's... Um, a fun little discussion, a little sidetrack. Uh, so let's close off the stream now. So catch you later, YouTube.